something that would need about four or five hours to cover. So I've tried to pick sort of the top, the top few uh, items in every category uh, that I've learned by working kind of as an embedded debugger uh, support person working with the Fusion Apps teams for the last two and a half years uh, in a number of these different categories. First, we'll talk briefly uh, about applications infrastructure and the structure of their apps, just to give you a little feel for the scope and the, the size of the effort of the Fusion applications and how they're uh, tackling problems like builds and interesting things like that. I won't belabor that too much because probably due to their size, some of the things they're doing won't necessarily reflect on what you need to do, but it might be interesting. I hope it's interesting to hear a little bit of how they've attacked the problem. Then we'll cover some tips in the view controller layer, task flows, list of values, miscellaneous, there wasn't a good category for a number of things, services, and in the end, a few tips about performance. So the Fusion Applications effort is around 2,500 developers. In Oracle, there's about 8,000 developers that work under the applications division, but they've come in through acquisitions. Some are supporting existing JDE, PeopleSoft, uh, Feeble, uh, various applications, the existing version of Oracle eBusiness Suite. So it's a huge team, but the ones specifically dedicated at this moment to implementing the next generation are about 2,500 developers, product managers, and QA. When they build their uh, entire application, which they do many times a day using the infrastructure that we're going to talk about, uh, they have about 3,500 different ADF libraries. Uh, they, I'll explain a little bit of how they've, over many refactorings and kind of learning the hard way, had to decide on a fairly strict way to organize their uh, libraries and packages to deal with the tremendous dependency uh, there's a lot of sharing going on between the components that happen in different teams. And so, of course, they didn't just know the answer at the beginning, and they've re redone this uh, factorization and separation several times over the last two and a half years. But now they have a model that they're happy with and that really helps them control a lot of the dependencies. There's a, a number of SCA composites that are related to uh, people processes and co uh, collaborating other types of uh, services, about 200 of those at the moment. And they're really just using, one of the points that I hope to make in some of these slides is that they're using out-of-box features of JDeveloper, like our normal projects and workspaces and ADF library features and our deployment capabilities. Now, we've definitely made changes over the last two years to accommodate things they found uh, that didn't work for them. And so you'll benefit by, in every release, that you're getting benefits by a lot of bug fixes and uh, problems that have happened and been solved before you actually get your hands on it. So they have a total of about 40 different applications. And they use a, a technique that they call a super web application, which is basically in their one of these 40 workspaces. Let's say it might have, I don't know, 30 or 40 projects in it. Uh, they have one of those projects that's simply aggregating all the web ADF libraries under a single context root so that they don't end up having you know, 40 different uh, web roots in an application. They use the ADF library as a feature that's undergone quite a bit of work uh, to simplify aggregating and composing reusable components. And so they pull it all together in a single project that they call their super web project. So they're using continuous integration that is, as you could imagine, uh, quite a huge uh, effort. And so, of course, anything uh, that they adopt, they've had to do some custom modifications to build some uh, automation infrastructure for themselves. They're running builds and regression tests on a huge farm of machines. And so some of the bits of this picture that I'll explain that aren't just off the shelf are things uh, they've needed to uh, invent practically just to scale the off-the-shelf components to the size of their effort. But our source control system is something that's an Oracle uh, proprietary source control that all developers inside of Oracle use called ADE. So that's the only piece of the puzzle that's not really an off-the-shelf 
solution, but that's something that's been there for 20 years or more, and so it's very ingrained in the Oracle development internally. For uh, doing builds using Apache AMP and uh, integrating with a tool that you may not be aware of that is supplied with the JDeveloper product called OJ Deploy, which allows you to take JDeveloper deployment profiles and deploy them from the command line or as part of an AMP script. So when they then schedule tests, they're using JUnit and Selenium for doing some of the automated UI testing. And those things need to run in this giant farm of machines to be able to finish a build in a reasonable amount of time. And then Cruise Control is a, I'm not sure if it's open source, but it's definitely a free solution for doing continuous builds where as soon as a, a developer checks in a transaction, that creates a label or a stripe of all their files, schedules a build, uh, does deployment, runs on the, the build farm, and then updates sort of a portal page that's got the results of whether the build succeeded or, or failed. So as you can imagine with the kind of complexity and size that they have, uh, they've implemented a few custom tools that uh, read through the XML metadata of uh, deployment profiles, workspaces, and projects to be able to build uh, a graph of all the dependencies so that they could then design a plan for building this humongous thing that is got pieces that are changing all the time. So part of their process involves sort of looking over the metadata about profiles, about dependencies between profiles, and then deciding exactly how the ant build scripts need to run in what order to produce things that uh, build dependencies before things that depend on them. So the OJ deploy is something uh, that should be uh, documented in our uh, online documentation, but is a key element of this uh, of this architecture. One thing they've had to do is modify the command line OJ deploy, uh, and they built kind of a server version of it that runs in this build farm. But effectively, there's no additional feature other than running on a farm. So all the deployment and processing of the deployment profiles is just the, the core features that OJ deploy is already doing for you at the command line. They've had to build themselves a, a special test runner that's aware of the same kind of dependency information that they gather at the beginning of the build so they can make sure that tests are sequenced and run in an appropriate order. And developers register, LRG stands for long regression, uh, they register tests that need to be run with each build on this uh, farm as part of their build files with some, I uh, imagine, some specific XML elements that they insert in there. So I'll talk a little bit about how the Fusion applications is broken up from a development perspective. Uh, they have the notion of pillars and families of applications. So there's three large groups of applications that could be installed completely separately, might be upgraded completely independently. And so the architecture needs to be able to allow and deal with the fact that someone might purchase human, uh, the HR system or HCM, the financial and supply chain management or CRM, in any combination, perhaps in the future with different version levels. And so those three main pillars uh, need to interact with each other in a way that's less tightly coupled than uh, applications that are within a single pillar like financial supply chain management, projects and procurement. And so the solution that they've come up with to support this type of uh, so-called cross-pillar sharing of information is leveraging services. And so in the 11G release that's come out over the summer, 11G release one, uh, a feature called service interface that we'll talk briefly about later when we get into some of the, the tips, allows you to take an application module, pick which view objects you'd like to expose as a web service, optionally add some custom code that could be callable by web service clients, and then just easily expose that as a service. We also make it easy to create what we call service-based VOs and EOs. So they're like a little shell of an EO that sits on one machine, one VM, and can invoke under the covers, invoke a service on the other side to get data, query data, filter data, update data. And so for less frequently referenced data between these pillars, they're using uh, the, the producing team would 
pr produce a library of remote VOs and EOs.